In industrial systems, the permanent operational readiness of controllers, even in the event of failure or short circuit in individual system parts, is absolutely crucial. As per controller standard IEC 61131 part 2, controllers must be able to withstand power loss over a period of 10 milliseconds without resulting in failure. Energy must continue to be supplied during this time, otherwise the entire system could suddenly fail. Device circuit breakers play a crucial role here in ensuring the system behaves properly in the event of an error. Device circuit breakers are available with or without current limitation. How do these two types differ in application and with respect to their tripping characteristic? Let's take a closer look. Each individual current path in the power supply network of a system is protected. If a short circuit occurs in one of these paths, the current will rise rapidly if the resulting load on the power supply exceeds its performance limit. This will cause the voltage to drop. Using electronic circuits, the short circuit can be detected quickly and the device circuit breaker then switches off within the 10 millisecond period required, thus disconnecting the faulty path from the entire network. Power is therefore no longer supplied to the faulty path. The controller itself has bridged the brief voltage dip. The voltage conditions in the rest of the system return to normal. The system continues running as normal, but without the branch that was switched off. In the event of an error, device circuit breakers without current limitation allow the maximum current of the power supply to flow, just like a mechanical circuit breaker or a typical fuse. Device circuit breakers with built-in current limitation ensure that, even in the event of a short circuit, the current in the protected branch does not exceed a specific value. This reduces the load on the power supply, thereby preventing a voltage drop. The controller does not have to bridge any downtimes and the system continues running without any errors. Nevertheless, the device circuit breaker trips after a defined time, thereby disconnecting the faulty branch from the supply. In the case of a temporary overload, for example, due to an electric motor starting up, the device circuit breaker enters current limitation mode, but does not trip. It then returns to the normal operating state after the overload event has passed. The system continues running as before. Device circuit breakers, with or without current limitation, equally serve their purpose and, in the event of an error, protect your system against total failure. With active current limitation, the maximum current is known in the event of an error, which means that a power supply overload can be specifically prevented, and the availability of your system is increased significantly.